I'm Dr. Abraham Morgenteller. I'm an associate clinical professor of urology at Harvard Medical School, and I'm affiliated with Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm here today to talk about uh, the recent uh, publication of my colleagues and myself called Testosterone Therapy and Cardiovascular Risks, Advances and uh, Controversies. So this is a pretty interesting story. In November 2013 was published an article in the Journal of the American Medical Association that for the first time seriously raised concerns about adverse cardiovascular events with testosterone therapy. It was followed two months later by a second paper by another group that suggested greater rates of myocardial infarctions in men who received testosterone. Two days after publication of that paper, the FDA announced it was going to review the safety of testosterone with regards to cardiovascular risk. And uh, the newspapers and the medical media um, uh, went wild. This affected medical practice. And we saw uh, in our own practices, those of my colleagues and I that are involved in clinical medicine, uh, that many of the men actually stopped taking their testosterone, who, some of whom had been on it for a very long time, and others were told by their cardiologists to not get started on it, even though they were appropriate medical candidates. This story of increased cardiovascular risks, to those of us who have been involved in research and education around testosterone, was curious, because there's been a long history of either benefit, reports of benefits of testosterone therapy in men with known cardiac histories, um, and then even more recently, um, quite, a, quite a literature that's been accumulating, suggesting quietly <laughs> over the years that testosterone therapy, if anything, improves cardiovascular risk factors. And so it was surprising to see these two papers come out. And, um, and so my colleagues and I decided to actually research the topic as extensively as we could. So it turns out that out of a fairly extensive literature, um, there really are only four articles that suggest anything negative about cardiovascular risk with testosterone therapy. The one that started the current um, excitement, if you will, uh, was written by uh, Dr. Vegan et al. Uh, and was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in November 2013. And what it reported from an observational study, retrospective, was that men who had low levels of testosterone who ended up getting a prescription for testosterone had a rate of adverse events, uh, heart attack, stroke, or death, of 25% at three years, whereas the untreated men uh, had a rate of only 19.9%. But it turned out that the authors had used a statistical methodology that is not widely known nor has been extensively validated, uh, and in which men who had an event who had received testosterone, those events counted as more than one event, and men who were untreated, their events counted as less than one event. It turns out that if you actually look at the, actu at the percentage of individuals in each group that had an event, the testosterone group had half the rate as the, uh, as the untreated men. 10.1% versus 21.2%. So that, those numbers give one pause. It later turned out in a, a second correction on that paper that was published that when they reviewed some of the literature, there are issues around data management because they discovered in a subset that in this all-male population, nearly 10% were women. Uh, 29 medical societies have actually petitioned JAMA to retract that paper because of their feeling that the data are not credible based on those data errors. In contrast to the four studies that allegedly showed increased cardiovascular risks with testosterone, there are literally uh, several dozen studies that have shown benefits of higher testosterone either through treatment or just with endogenous uh, levels. Uh, specifically with regards to mortality, and testosterone treatment, there are two studies that have shown that men who were treated actually had reduced mortality by one half compared to untreated men who also had low testosterone. In addition, what we found is uh, clear evidence uh, from the literature 
that low levels of testosterone are associated with more atherosclerosis, uh, looking either at atherosclerosis within the aorta or with the carotid intima media thickness. And in some randomized control studies, small, uh, treatment with testosterone compared to men treated with placebo or with nothing actually showed a decrease in the thickness of the carotid intima media, which is really interesting. We also found in the literature that uh, in men with known heart disease, either with angina or with congestive heart failure, in a small number of small to moderately sized studies, that men with testosterone actually had functional improvement compared to men treated with placebo. I think what people want to know from a review like this is testosterone therapy safe with regard to cardiovascular risk. So uh, that's a hard thing to answer in medicine in any definitive way. And one thing that's missing from the literature is a large prospective long-term study in men as we've had in women with the Women's Health Initiative study and, and estrogen and progesterone. So one has to be cautious. But from looking and reviewing at this literature that is quite extensive, the literature all points really in one direction. There is no good evidence that we could find that suggests that testosterone therapy increases cardiovascular risk. That's not to say that it's perfectly safe, but we cannot find that evidence. And the headlines that jumped on those recent retrospective studies appear to have been um, too strong. At the same time, I think that one of the lessons of all this that's really important for the practitioner to know is that the evidence is clear that testosterone deficiency by itself represents a risk factor for mortality, atherosclerosis, and certainly obesity. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.